A month or two ago, he like he left school, and we found out it was because of his ear. And I don't know much. I just know that he like gets headaches and can't sleep like nights in a row. It's a rough deal to to have to deal with this every day, and and, and to have that fear that like if I don't have my earplugs in by accident, there's a cymbal crash behind me that just may put me out. He actually found us an uh, internet website that had um, like like a clip of what he sort of hears every day, like 24-7. That's a, a difficult thing to deal with when you have something that's ongoing daily. That's something I suffer. Wondering why is it that I have to continue hearing these noises all the time. And the one effect I know is I invited him to my concert I had for my orchestra, and he wasn't able to attend because of his ear. So he had me like mail him a tape. Well, before tonight, it's, my life was normal, both work, home, relationship with my family and friends and my students. I wasn't angry at God, but I was just angry because why me? You know, my life seemed to be going better. And, and then all of a sudden this noise, this thing, it was horrible. And of course, for the first two months that I, got, that I had it, of course, every day I spent wishing and waiting for it to go away. Well, you got to keep some kind of a sound going. You have tinnitus, any kind of a sound. So the once I had tinnitus, um, once I kicked up, and this is my third major flare-up, um, it, it, everything's more difficult. Being afraid to do my job because of the nature of my job, um, my moods change. I'm short with my kids. I'm short with my family, and uh, so they have to pay the price too. Initially, Dave was the first to get tinnitus, and I didn't really recognize it for what it was. I did know that there was noises in my head, but I didn't know what it was. And normally, being identical twins, if something occurs to Dave, usually about six or seven months after. And sometimes longer. Sometimes longer. Yeah, I mean, be a couple years, but yeah. it usually follows. Maybe like a constant air raid siren in your head, like a constant warning, danger kind of thing. Um, and uh, it's, I mean, yeah, right now it's actually, not so bad. Uh, some days it's not. He gave me a name for it finally. He said it was, uh, it was tinnitus. The doctor really didn't uh, give any alternatives, or any suggestions. He just said you live with it. The doctor that he went to see never had any of that information to give to him. Here's a meeting you can go to. Here's what you can do. You know, he just left him empty. And that's what a lot of doctors do. In the ears? Yeah. Ringing? That's me. That's me. I have it. You hear more often when you're in quiet locations. It's it's just like a little ringing in the ears. Mostly when I go to bed at night, I can hear it. I would say sometimes it's worse than other times. I don't know if it's a rush of blood to my head or something, but if I get up real quick when I've been uh, leaning over, and I can hear it really loud. It's kind of like a shoulder ache or something. You don't go around telling everybody your, your shoulder aches unless you're a consistent whiner. Uh, but uh, yeah, I would imagine a lot more people have it than, than uh, people realize.
Everybody's tinnitus is personal and different. Uh, everyone I've ever met. Squeaking sound, like like a tone. It was very, very high, and it just kept on going. When it gets bad, it, it just it just sounds like it, it feels heavy. It feels like your head's about to explode. If I lay down on my right side in bed, my ears will go. And it drives me out of my mind. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Some weird things like that. Tinnitus they describe normally as a, a roaring or a sound in your ears where there is no external sound. Like there is absolutely no escape from this, like you're just in some kind of cage uh, and, and you can't um, even move to make yourself slightly more comfortable, like an inch you can't scratch or, or like, a, like a wound that's just bleeding that you can't. An affliction that there's no outward sign of, of problem. You know, people see you have a broken arm, and they, you know, his broken arm, but you, people can't see tonight as they can't hear it because it's subjective. I also have a fullness with a Swish. It's it's real full and they go sh swish, swish, swish. Like a bumblebee almost. Now there's a lot of conversation about it being in your cochlean, about being in your hair cells in your inner ear. Screech, uh, not unlike the feedback on a microphone in front of a speaker at 4,000 hertz. I couldn't lay on my, my right side and I got bubbling in my ear. That's when I started sleeping like this. It's like standing underneath a telephone wire. And I would say it's kind of a, a low pitch right now. Of course, there's, you know, wind and things around that block it. When I talk about my tinnitus, I'm talking about a sound that sounds like it's right in the middle of my head. It has nothing to do with my ears at all. It's not any one pure pitch. I say 4,000 hertz because that's approximately where it is, but it's a variety of pitches. So it's, 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 it's what, almost like white noise, but it's so high. It, it, unless I don't focus on it, I hear a single pitch, but when I really think about it, I could hear eight or nine different pitches at once. Well, I was in uh, uh, getting an ear, ear exam once, and they said, uh, we're going to try to match that height the sound. They turned it up and turned it up and turned it up. I said, higher, higher, higher. Couldn't go as high. And, and mine is like standing under uh, high-tension power lines. It's a, it's a high-pitched sound, and uh, uh, it, it must be in the range of crickets and a lot of birds because I, I can't hear those anymore when the tinnitus is, it, is uh, loud. Like, and this side, like, like the wind blowing in your ear. That's what I get on this side. This one here is more of a, a bump. The other day I walked into a McDonald's. I've never heard a pitch as high as a pitch that's in my head. And they just took a, a frozen bag, you know, uh, thing of French fries, and threw them in the deep fryer. And the initial sound to come off of that, like, whoosh, I thought, man, I finally heard a pitch that matches the pitch in my head. And you, you talked about French fries frying, and that, that is pretty accurate. Maybe a little higher pitch sound than that. The problem is, is trying to get something as high pitch as I have. I mean, everything that's on the market commercially doesn't even come close to the pitch that I have. That's the problem. So maybe McDonald's should have a... <laughs> yeah. If I, if I have a continuous, continuous tape of throwing a, uh, frozen french fries into a deep fryer. <laughs>